Good morning, class. Today's lecture is on the very first model of the class, something called the circular flow diagram. And so with this model, what we're trying to do is to see how resources end up being transmitted throughout a market economy. A couple of markets that we want to pay attention to. Right? So we're talking about a market, it's involving people buying a good, people selling a good. Right? And each of these parties are going to be acting in their own self-interest. Right? So likely when you're thinking about this process, you're probably thinking about yourself acting as a consumer, buying something from a business. We see that in the circular flow diagram, but we see another set of interactions as well. So let's take a look at what we have here on the board. The two main groups that interact with one another when dealing with market transactions are going to be firms, remember that's the word that we use for all businesses, and households, that's the word that we're going to use for everybody else out there. Right? And so the principal way that, or maybe the most notable way that we interact with firms is through these markets for goods and services. And so the process here is really straightforward. In the market for goods and services, what's occurring is that all of us as households are giving businesses money, so we pay them, and in exchange for paying businesses, they're going to give us stuff, right? All of the clothing and cars and food that we consume. And so the circular flow diagram is just putting labels to that general process, right? So you can see then going from households to firms coming this way through the channel of goods and services markets or product markets, we give them money. So that's expenditure on goods and services. You're going to want to know that label. Right? We don't give businesses money for nothing. We want something coming back. So coming back from firms to households, again, through the channel of these product markets or markets for goods and services, are going to be all those things that we buy, right? And so these are goods and services. And right? so that's one interaction that we see in market economies occurring up here through this top market. Underneath, though, we have a second set of interactions that occur. Right? And here, we're dealing with markets for these factors of production. Other textbooks will call these factor markets or resource markets. And what's interesting about this bottom interaction here is that the role of buyer and seller is flipped around, where in product markets, it's in fact firms who are buying resources, and it's in fact households who are selling those resources. Right? So, of course, businesses need all kinds of productive inputs to make whatever it is they're making. They acquire that from private citizens uh, who are modeled here as households. So, again, what we want to be able to do is to label this particular interaction properly. So, take a look at these flows that we have here with these arrows. We have going from, uh, from let's see here, from households going to firms, well, we supply firms with all those inputs that they need for production. Here we're talking about things like land, labor, capital, entrepreneurship. Right? All those are inputs that are owned by a household, and then we quote unquote sell them to a firm. As we're selling these resources to firms, we're gonna see compensation coming back, money coming from firms towards households through these factor markets. Right? So this arrow right here is gonna represent all the payment that household receive in exchange for those factors of production. So a really common test question that you'll likely encounter is uh, based on labeling these particular exchanges. Another thing that you want to recognize when dealing with this circular flow diagram is that the role of buyer and seller is not fixed, right? In certain markets, it's the case that households are buying stuff from firms, but in other markets, the role of buyer and seller is flipped around. One last thing to note, you can see that I've set up the circular flow diagram in this case with firms on the left and households on the right and product markets up top and resource markets down below. Uh, but it wouldn't be wrong to reconfigure that, right? You could, if you wanted, put households over here and firms over here or reconfigure it in any way so long as you properly adjusted all of the arrows correspondingly so that you're measuring these flows in the correct way. There you have it, the circular flow diagram. Adios.